I guess we'll get started. Welcome to the No Internship, No Problem presentation. Um, I'm one of the career fellows, as well as Hannah and Elena, who will introduce themselves um, for a brief introduction. Um, I'm Maggie, I'm a junior, I work in the Career Center, and I'm majoring in math and geology. Um, and I'll pass it on to Hannah. Hi everyone, um, like Maggie said, I'm Hannah. I'm a sophomore and a current career fellow. Um, and I'm double majoring in community health and environmental studies. And I'll pass it on to Elena. Hi everyone, I'm Elena. Um, I'm also a career fellow. Like Hannah, I'm a sophomore and like Maggie, I'm a math major. It's nice to see you. Sorry, I'm working on disabling the ringing noise. But I don't know if I know how, so we might just have to suck it up. Okay, yeah, let's get started. So today we're gonna talk about, um, thanks. Today we're gonna talk about all of this stuff. So we're going to think about what we want out of our summers, uh, brainstorm, you know, kind of how to hone those in a little bit. We're going to talk about ideas on how to get there without an internship. So the first and I think most important step is before you start thinking about what you're going to do this summer, you have to kind of think about what you want out of this summer. So uh, now is a great time to think a little bit about what kind of things you want to be different at the end of the summer than at the beginning. Um, maybe there are some skills you want to learn, some knowledge you want to develop, um, some experiences you want to have. Just take a couple minutes and think about, you know, what you can get out of this summer for yourself. So these are a few good examples of maybe potential skills or potential knowledge, potential experiences that you want to get out of this summer. So I want to go through each one of these individually and talk about how they might fit what we are thinking about in terms of a summer without an internship. So I'm going to start with skills. And for that kind of question, you want to be asking yourself what you want to be able to do. So some common examples of skills people want to develop over the summer would be here we have Excel skills, public speaking, financial modeling, but all kinds of skills like soft or hard will work for um, brainstorming this kind of thing. Uh, if it were me, I would just think about like, you know, what I would find useful for my classes or maybe if I'm thinking about an internship, not this summer, but next summer, what kind of skills would make me really marketable for that? Um, same kind of question with knowledgeable. You want to be asking yourself what kind of information would be helpful for your career. So maybe someone who is going into education or going into politics would want to learn about the public education system. Um, and, you know, there are other kinds of questions, too, that you might be looking for. Um, not in terms of what might make you marketable for your next career option, but kind of just thinking about what you might want that next career option to be. So open your summer up to these kind of exploration questions, like maybe accounting is right for you, maybe it isn't. And now that you are, you know, kind of looking at some free time over the summer, might be a great time to explore those questions, ask yourself these kinds of things, figure some of this stuff out without having to waste time on like an actual internship. Um, for professional experiences, you could definitely, even without an internship, have these professional experiences. A lot of people will shadow over the summer, 
or you can just like reach out to people and become more comfortable communicating with professionals in your field. Um, also don't discount personal experiences. Rest is very meaningful and super important in a high stress school year. Summer break is, you know, meant for experiences and also meant for rest. So think about your personal goals. Think about how they're going to fit in with your professional goals. Don't just ignore them completely. <laughs> So once you've kind of taken a couple minutes, brainstormed some skills, brainstormed some knowledge, we want to be thinking about strategies to make this stuff happen for ourselves. So we talked about the skill of financial modeling. We're going to talk a little bit more about different strategies, different resources. We're going to set you guys up with a lot of stuff to help you get there. But one example would be to like find some YouTube videos. Think about how what the resources are for financial modeling. And then actually like sit down, take some time, get out a notebook and learn. Because then if you learn it on your own, you can still put it on your resume. <laughs> so it still counts even if you're not learning it in like a formal setting. With knowledge, maybe you're talking to professionals. Maybe you meet with one of the career advisors or one of the career fellows. This kind of, this slide is really meant to show you that there are options to meet these goals, even in a less formalized setting. There's stuff that you can do. So I will leave it to Hannah to talk about what some of those things are. Yeah, and like Elena said, it's really important to remember and really digest the idea that your experience does not have to be official in order to be meaningful. There are so many ways to grow those skills, those personal development skills that you are interested in to grow professionally and personally without um, being in a formal official environment. So we're going to get into some of those ways that you can learn these skills and ideas in a less official way. Also, I'm really sorry about the plane outside. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. So one way that you can sort of have some meaningful experiences over the summer is to use Jumbo for Jumbos, which is um, a resource to find micro internships. Um, and this is with Tufts alumni and they provide opportunities for undergrads um, to do like smaller projects or gigs that can be done remotely. And they're really great ways to sort of get a taste of different kinds of um, activities and work that you can be doing. Um, so I'm going to take you through, hopefully the screen share will work, to the herd. Are you able to see this or do I have to share a new screen? Uh, yeah, I think you have to share a new screen. We're still looking okay. at the presentation. Okay, so this is the herd um, and you can get to the herd through the um, Career Center website if you're not sure how to get there. It's right on the home page up in the top right corner. Um, but once you're here, not only is the herd great for connecting with alumni, um, which is how I think most people think of it, but you can find these Jumbos for Jumbos micro internships by going to projects up here at the top. And you can search in here. Um, like different areas that you want experience with that you can do these small little jobs. Um, so we'll just put in, let's see, data and analytics for now. And I know this looks pretty bare right now, but they start filling up towards the end of the spring semester and new things will be popping up in the summer. Um, but yeah, once you find an opportunity under projects, you just click on it. It says whether it's compensated or not, um, when they want you to start and how long the project will be. There's really a dip, there's a wide span for how long these projects last. And then you just apply and hopefully get to have a really cool experience with some Tufts alumni. Let me take us back to the PowerPoint. Another um, type of experience that you can get to learn those skills 
are these virtual work experiences, which are entry level work projects from real companies. So you're really getting to, even though it's not an extended period of time that you're doing an internship or a job, you're really getting the same um, work project experience that you would be getting in those internships. And it's really great to try out different areas and see um, if you're really interested in doing the kind of work that you might want to explore. Um, so specifically, these virtual work experiences are for consulting technology, finance, and law work. Um, and this you can also find on the Career Center website. And thank you for bearing with me as I keep switching back and forth between screen shares. Um, so here you can find them in the career resources right here on the homepage, or you can, I just search virtual um, work in the search bar up here, maybe. Okay, let's go through the career resources and it's right there. Um, so this is a great description of what you can expect. Um, typically smaller work experiences, um, they're smaller projects. And you can treat this kind of like a case study a little bit to be like, okay, this is what I think I might be interested in doing. Let me see, let me do this one project and see how I actually feel about it. Um, so it's with real companies that you might recognize like Citi, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs. Um, and so, yeah, this has a great description of how it works. You just, you get a real boss, real companies, and you do the work that you would do in real life. And you can find the different programs down here below and just explore. So yeah, so I really encourage if you're interested in those areas to after um, the workshop, just explore these different virtual working experiences. And one of the last resources I'm gonna talk about is Udemy, which is a really cool person. I love this platform. Um, you can access hundreds of online courses and training videos on so many different topics, both hard and soft skills. So whether you're working on those more personal or like professional workplace skills that we're talking about, or the more like I want to get into programming or something like that, you can learn both those hard and soft skills. And through Tufts, they're completely free, which is amazing. So you once again can find all of these resources on the Career Center website. Um, it logs me in so you can see I'm working on this um, ArcGIS course, but you can search for anything, like let's say you wanna get into programming as just an example. You can search just a broad um, term and you can go by topic here. You can um, filter by level, the language, different features. Um, yeah, you can see they're all rated and have the different hours and how many lectures. It's a really, I would say it's, um, like if you were to do YouTube tutorials, but you know that they're like vetted and verified. Um, and there are just so many different skills that you can learn from Udemy. So yeah, and I think with that, I will pass it off to Maggie. I definitely recommend you explore those resources afterwards. Yeah, there's a lot of really great resources on the website and just definitely going and clicking on different tabs that you think that catch, catches your interest. I'll actually be talking about two more resources, one that Hannah's already touched on, which is the herd, and then also LinkedIn. Uh, another resource, and also something that we don't really think of as a resource as much, is making new connections with people. Uh, networking can be a scary thing to some people, and it seems so formal, but really it's reaching out to people and having those conversations and one way that Tufts supports these conversations is by having platforms such as The Herd and LinkedIn. So I'm going to show you how to find um, alumni on The Herd and LinkedIn. 
So I'm going to, I don't know if, I have it pulled up on my computer, so I'm going to see if I can screen share if that might be easier. Um, if that doesn't work, I can also pull it up on mine. Okay, yes. So I'm going to pull up LinkedIn first. So, okay. Awesome. So this is the Tufts University homepage on LinkedIn. Uh, if you just search for Tufts University. And when you're on the homepage, if you click over to the alumni tab, it'll take you to uh, like a filter search starting from 1900 all the way to present. And you can search alumni by what they do or their major. So let's say, for example, um, you want to talk to someone who's majoring in geology. You just search geology. Um, It'll pop up with all of the different stats of where they live and where they work. So it's also a helpful overview to see what career paths they've taken. So let's, for example, click on consultants. Four, four people have worked there. Let's see. So then it will hold on. <laughs> make sure I have the right filters selected. If next. And then if you want to filter it more, you can. Next, and it'll show you some more information about what they're skilled at. So let me make sure, it'll pop up with four alumni. Just like pop up. Oh, yeah, there you go. So it's below it. It looks like a separate section, which caught me at first. Um, and so you can click on their page and you can message them and they have a range of different experiences. So you can also see what year they graduated in. Uh, some are more recent, some are a bit older, but from there you can see um, kind of what their career path was, message them and just look at what they've done as inspiration or just seeing what you can do with different majors. So this is LinkedIn and using that to connect with alumni. Um, if you go to the herd, this is a homepage. Uh, Hannah showed how to look at the projects under this tab. You can also explore the community. So under the explore the community tab, it will also first pop up with uh, filters that you can look at and hopefully load. Um, but a similar system where you can filter by major, you can filter by industry. So let's stick again with the geology example. Uh, it'll pop up with a whole bunch of different students, both at Tufts and at other schools if they're getting their PhD there, but a Tufts student who was majoring in geology. And similar thing, you can reach out, you can connect to them and also see what different career paths they've been on. So both the herd and LinkedIn are great ways to reach out to other people, see different career paths, see different options, and reaching out to them with a quick email is a great way to start getting connected. So in the next slide, I'm going to share about how to have some of those conversations. So typically, it'll be, you can ask for about like 30 minutes of their time, low pressure. Um, you should also do some research on the person before you talk to them, just like looking at what they've done previously, what they've majored in, maybe what their job is, so that you have a little bit of an idea and can go off of what they've done and ask more specific questions. Uh, this also speaks to the next one, which is preparing insightful questions. Uh, just asking about, um, you know, oh, how did they choose this career path? What do they like the most? You can also, especially on the herd, ask for learning opportunities and referrals to other experts. Um, more so with the herd, it's a networking site as opposed to finding a job. So this career conversation with them would be more about asking about their experience and whatever else you can learn from what their experience has been as opposed to uh, finding a job through them. But of course, they can help you get connected to other people and networking is always a great way to find your next career opportunity. 
And of course, if the person you're talking to, uh, you have a really good conversation with them and you guys want to keep in touch, you can reach out by email again. Um, but yeah, so having these peer conversations uh, is a great way to both further your own knowledge of the field and get connected to others as well. All right, so kind of to wrap up with an action plan, um, first, you're going to want to find and schedule career conversations with alumni to learn more about whatever you're interested in pursuing. And then let's say from there, you're like, okay, from this conversation, um, I want to find an education-focused nonprofit to volunteer at. So kind of from that conversation, you're like, okay, now I have a clear path of what I want to do. Let's say your internship for that fell through, you can, like, unfortunately, sometimes those things happen and this presentation is to help you find ways to make the most of that. So even if you had an original goal, you can still stick with what you want your outcome to be and have that last step be to teach yourself those skills through Udemy or YouTube and maybe even reaching out to alumni who can help get you connected to other resources. So making an action plan with what you want your summer to be about, really thinking and saying that thing like, okay, I have an idea of what I want to do, or if you had a plan that didn't work, still looking at that plan and being like, okay, what did I want to gain from this experience? What knowledge, what connections did I want? And being able to find those a different way. So now is a good time. If anyone has any questions, you can unmute and ask, or you can drop them in the chat. Um, I know some people have been in the chat throughout this, which has been awesome, but if anyone has any questions that they want to ask now, we would be happy to answer them. If you don't have any questions now, you can also come to Career Labs, which we have Mondays through Fridays from 12 to 2 in person in Dowling, and then we also have virtual Career Labs Tuesdays and Thursdays 5 to 7. Uh, and that's all on the Career Center website. All right, let's see, a few questions. Uh, is there any way that list links to all the websites mentioned? Um, so they're all kind of like centrally located in the presentation, but they're all on our website. So uh, the places that we showed in the presentation, whether that's, it, the ones we mentioned are in the top bar, so like the herd, um, and some of the career resources that you search for. So that'd be a good place to start. Um, oh, hard skills versus soft skills. So uh, we tend to categorize skills into hard skills and soft skills by saying like hard skills is like, oh, I know how to code in this language or I know how to uh, use Microsoft Excel. I know how to use a sewing machine, like things that are like concrete skills that um, employers might be looking for as like qualifications versus soft skills might be something like, oh, I'm a good team player. I'm really organized. Um, I'm more of a perfectionist or I'm more of a team player. So things that um, aren't as quantifiable, but are still skills. Well, I will stand for a little bit. Thank you for coming and I hope you have a great weekend.